Okay, well, thank you very much for being here, first and foremost. It's great to be back in Buffalo in front of City Hall. I think it was two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that I was right here and unveiled our crime plan. Now, I've got the greatest crime fighter, maybe in American history, but certainly in the state of New York's history here uh, in Rudy Giuliani, so I'll let him elaborate on that. Uh, but let me talk to you a little bit about kind of the importance of the next 11 days here as we get into primary day. Uh, on June 28th and kind of some of the issues that we've been specifically focused on. First and foremost, as I met little Savannah over here and I think about my daughter Grace, you know, every single day that I get up, I think about what kind of a state are we going to leave to her. Uh, and I think about her education and making sure that we can do everything possible that she has more choices and more options. That means a tax credit system. That means that any New Yorker that wants to send their child to parochial school, the Catholic school, like I had the opportunity, or to private school, or to homeschooling, utilizing pods, that New Yorkers have all those property tax dollars in their hands as a tax credit. As governor, I would push for that starting in our first term, really in our first year here in our first budget negotiations. I would also look at increasing charter schools. Again, I believe the parents are the primary stakeholders in our kids' education, and we need more choices for parents and kids and not less choices. Look, if we look at New, York, New York's $220 billion budget, $31 billion of that actually is going into education. That's the most per capita per student in the country. Yet we performed average, mattering which study you look at, somewhere between 23rd and 29th, even below average in terms of that. Our kids deserve far better than they're getting from an education perspective. And finally, I would look at a piece of legislation that was signed into law in the state of Florida by a guy named DeSantis called the Parental Rights and Education Act. Now, I know much of the media has dubbed it three words, which does not appear in that bill, but I believe that it truly is a great, I should say, something that we would do in New York here. It truly did a great job uh, from a policy perspective in making sure that we are teaching traditional education here in New York, in the United States of America. Um, I think it's obvious that our children have been taught, I would say, hypersexualization at a very early age. That's something that I really am pushing to make sure those kids can maintain their innocence. Like I said, when I think about my daughter, I want her to have a child. I don't think that at six, seven, eight years old, they should be taught about sex at that age. They should have innocence. It's so important to do that, and as governor, I would fight for that. Now, from an economic standpoint, I mentioned before New York's $220 billion budget. Compare it to Florida at $98 billion. Florida with a million more people than New York. It's pretty obvious who's doing a better job at being efficient in a state government. We obviously are doing so much from a wasteful perspective. Uh, when we look at this most recent budget, and you can see where all of the spending has been, uh, it's really been atrocious. We're not doing the best by our taxpayers and by our job creators, frankly. Uh, I had the opportunity to work four years in the White House for President Trump. And one of the issues that I worked on him with was his regulatory reform issue. When he made the statement on the campaign that for every regulation he'd sign into law, he would cut two. That number was over eight to one by the time he walked out of the White House. That's the kind of leadership that we need in Albany. We need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to eliminate the bureaucracy, to go after the bureaucracy, not to continue to see it grow as we have seen it time and time again. Before I get more into it, I'd like to bring you up in terms of our crime plan, because there are so many issues that are facing New Yorkers. One more, actually, before I bring you up there, which I think is so important. Uh, as New Yorkers might have seen a couple of days ago, uh, there was a debate, a gubernatorial debate. And I, unfortunately, because I have chosen not to get the shot, was not allowed to actually be on stage with my three competitors. I believe that all of these COVID mandates, which have come down from the last two governors and the last health, health commissioners, should go in the ash bin of history on day one. And anybody who's lost their job because of said COVID mandates should get their job back on day one with back pen. As somebody who doesn't just talk the talk on this, but who truly walks the walk, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that is true to my heart, and I promise you, on day one, I will look out for those New Yorkers who are making the conscious health decisions 
and not being forced by New York. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, thank you to the people of Binghamton. When I was at uh, we were in Binghamton <laughs> last night. No wonder the courthouse looked good. Thank you to the people of Buffalo, where I tried a case for 10 weeks, so I should remember, with Judge R. Carroll. This is a uh, very, very uh, important campaign because New York is going in a terrible, terrible direction. I mean, I, I, I do a radio show every day at 3 o'clock, so I get up early in the morning and I get out all the headlines. Nine people shot yesterday in New York City, one killed. Uh, one of them was a brag uh, releasee. This is a person who should have been in jail. Should have been in jail before he got to shoot somebody. He committed a crime with a gun. You talk about gun control? They don't enforce it. Somebody gets caught with a gun in New York, uh, first time, they don't even get prosecuted. So uh, you're going to pass more gun control laws, you're not going to prosecute? That, that was hundreds of people all over the state. That's the kind of brag rule. That's the Soros rule. That's the rule of uh, Gascon, who released this guy who killed these two police officers. Should have been in jail. If Gascon weren't the DA of Los Angeles, these two police officers would be alive today. We got situations like this in New York. We've got them in Buffalo. How, how's Buffalo one of the top 10%, 15% in crime in the nation? How is that, Buffalo? How is Rochester number six in murder? How? Because of the policies of, um, I don't know what you call them, progressive, retrogressive, Democrat administrations. Democrat governors go out on scandals. Democrat legislature that basically is a pro-criminal legislature. The crime in New York is at epidemic proportions. I know something about it. I reduced crime 65% in New York City. That's the most any mayor or governor has ever reduced crime any place in the United States. So Andrew Giuliani is the person who can do that. He can uh, take over, take charge, and this thing will turn around very, very quickly. It won't be like one of these, I'll tell you one thing and then I'll do another, like so many other of our politicians. I think you want an indication of what kind of leader he is. General Flynn, you all know General Flynn, has had an opportunity to work with both men, Andrew and Lee Zeldin. Yesterday, he strongly endorsed Andrew Giuliani as having the leadership qualities necessary to do this, and not specifically Lee Zeldin. Uh, General Flynn knows what he's talking about where it comes to who has leadership qualities. I know they're hard to assess, but they make the difference between a bad governor and a good governor, a bad president and a good president. Uh, we've had presidents that were brilliant and were terrible leaders. We've had presidents that were, we never expected were going to have the leadership abilities that they had. Who we expected uh, that Donald Trump would have accomplished what he accomplished did more than any president since the one I worked for, Ronald Reagan. You could have said, well, Donald Trump had no experience. Well, he did. He had experience running things. Andrew has been working with me on reducing crime since before we were members. Not just the crime in New York that we reduced, but the crime that I've done with my company, which I was with for 15, 18 years, all over the world. When I say we can reduce crime, I know we can. I know the programs, and he knows them, that you put into effect. First thing he's going to do, and no candidate has even said this. I mean, they're running on uh, Rolex Rob. And uh, you took money from the wrong people. Or you misapplied your money, says Wilson against Zeldin. Or you stole it, I don't know. And Wilson, I don't know what Zeldin says about him. He sure doesn't like it. The reason Andrew won the debate, in everyone's estimation the other night, was they were engaging in a high school debate, and he was engaging in a gubernatorial debate. They were all trying, and particularly Zeldin. Zeldin. Zeldin went after two people. I remember when I was trained by one of the greatest political consultants in the world, Roger Ailes, told me never go after more than one person in a debate. You look silly, and you look like all you have is negative. Well, that's what Zeldin did, and that's why, that's why all of a sudden the Siena poll moved from Andrew by five to Andrew by 14. So I think what General Flynn sees is what the people in New York see. They see an innate leadership ability. 
Andrew will establish a five billion dollar fund to refund the police. Now, if you say, well, how do you do that? That's what Bill Clinton did. I happen to work on that. I understand that. I understand how, I, how it's done. That helped to bring crime down all of America. We'll make sure these police forces have the police officers they need. In my analysis, almost all of them are down 20 to 25 percent. Rochester is the biggest example. They, died, they just tried their experiment of alternative policing led by Black Lives Matter, the police killing organization. Uh, Rochester last year was in a state of shock. More people killed in Rochester than in entire history, and it goes to number five or six in the country in murder based on the Democrat plan of reorganizing the police. Well, somebody has to go back and reorganize the police the right way. That's why the Fund the Police program at $5 billion will allow any community that wants it to get money to hire more police. And then there'll be some guidance in terms of giving them some training, making sure they're aware of the most modern CompStat program, which you may not know, but CompStat program was the hidden gem that helped me reduce murder by 65%. I could use the CompStat program here in Buffalo, and in a month I could bring crime down. Andrew will make sure that's in every place. Andrew will also make sure the bail law is changed. No ifs, ands, or buts. No Hochul. She's been governor now long enough to have her lieutenant governor resign in scandal. That's pretty good. The last two elected governors had to resign in scandal, Democrat. And the Democrat new governor, a lieutenant governor, has to resign before she even gets a chance to run for election. What a start, Hochul. Plus, she's spending all her time on putting up the, the stadium here in Buffalo. I'm not a big objector to that. I love football. <laughs> And I happen to have an affinity for the Bills because I represented Jim Kelly. But what I am against is her husband having the concessions. What the hell is her husband doing in the company that's going to get the concessions at that stadium? Do you know the biggest moneymaker in a new stadium are concessions? The new Yankee Stadium went up. Concessions went up three times. Her husband is going to profit from her public office. That stinks. That stinks. We don't need another ethically challenged governor in New York. We need a governor who's going to be not working for money for her husband, but working for us. Not telling us she's going to get rid of bail and does it. She, what does she need? She has both houses of the legislature. Both houses of the legislature, she can't get it done. Isn't it time to resign? If you can't get bail reform done, these crimes that took place in New York City I bet crimes that took place here just in the last day or two only occurred because of bail reform. Only occurred because people aren't put in jail who commit the crimes. You can have a gun, you don't go to jail. So Andrew will make sure that law is changed. And he'll make sure that we go back to three strikes and you're out. We'll go back to, you show us you're a career criminal, we put you away for a very long time. We don't put you back out on the street so you can hurt uh, the people of, of uh, Syracuse and of Binghamton, and of particularly Rochester, Buffalo. Buffalo is probably a little behind Rochester, I would say, in terms of crime. So that's what Andrew can do. That's why he has General Flynn's endorsement. And that's why General Flynn, who knows both men well, says there's no choice. Andrew's got the leadership ability to get this done. He's somebody that doesn't I'm trying to find the right word to say this. <laughs> fold like a cheap suit, maybe. How about okay, that? right. He, he doesn't say one thing and do another. It's a vanity. Try to we, have to, we have to be careful with our language. So. This is the man that should be the next governor. I can guarantee you, six months from the time he's governor, crime was already. And then tax reduction, 15% across the board, budget cuts. And if he can't get bail reform done, He'll go into the districts of the people that are voting against it and explain it to them. Now, people say, how can a Republican get it through a Democratic legislature? Well, how the hell did Trump get a tax reduction through a Democratic Congress? How did Ronald Reagan get another massive tax reduction through a Democratic Congress? How did I get anything through a city council that was 45 Democrats and six Republicans? I work with them. And when it didn't work, I went into their districts. And I said, three people got killed last night. 
And those three people wouldn't have been killed if the legislature, and particularly your member, didn't vote to let him be free. So you want to start saving people? There's one thing you can do. Call up your assemblyman or your state senator and say, you aren't going to be the assemblyman and state senator anymore if you don't change bail reform. I guarantee you, it might take a year, it'll get done. So before we take any questions, I just want to point out here, Savannah's mom, I was just reading her shirt, it says, I do not co-parent with the government. And I think, obviously, from an education standpoint, that uh, is so important. But in looking at where Albany has really come in the last 15 years, went from a place where we had public servants that were out there every single day understanding that their boss were the 19.5 million New Yorkers to a place where you have two, I would say, dictatorial governors now between Hochul and Cuomo doing everything they possibly can to centralize more power in Albany. Um, I'm happy to take any questions, please. Sure. Uh, you come to Buffalo and, uh, you know, we're kind of missing the elephant in the room here that there was a mass shooting yeah. a month ago. Uh, what do you make of the new gun reform plan that's just been passed in Albany? Well, I think in looking at Hochul's reaction to this, it's uh, continued to go after the Second and the First Amendment. Uh, what I would like to see is... Uh, would you like me to answer the question or no? And answer my other question, uh, Okay, well, if you let me, we can go back and forth or we can talk over each other. I'm good at talking over people, but I'd much rather talk. I can tell. Um, okay, so the first question was again. Go ahead, sir. Uh, your reaction to the new gun law is fantastic. Yes, okay. So my reaction is very simply this. In looking at the fact that you had this shooter over a year ago in Broome County, New York State, actually the New York State police had him under, uh, they, they had him actually, and they did nothing. I think very simply, if you actually, the police had the resources necessary to hold this guy. If you look at the red flag laws that were on the books at the time, this guy never should have actually had a weapon. So what went wrong here? Did the police actually not have the resources necessary to hold somebody like this? Uh, that's why I proposed a $5 billion refunding our, of our police. So that way somebody that does have the mental issues like this guy has does not have the opportunity to actually get out there. So that's the first part. You asked, you asked about the First Amendment, so let me get on the First Amendment. Uh, Hochul's immediate reaction, as was the Biden team's immediate reaction, was we need to censor more on social media. Um, I think that's the wrong answer. To me, I would look at it this way. Let's repeal Section 230, and I'll tell you why. Instead of actually having a leftist board at a Twitter or an Instagram or a Facebook look at each and every single post and say, well, you know, Rudy Giuliani or Donald Trump's post, uh, that is hate speech, but the Ayatollah's post is not hate speech. I think it's pretty obvious that they've become very political. You will now have the general counsels look at liability. And I think that is a far more effective indicator of actually making sure what is on there is safe versus what political. So are you saying, are you suggesting that somebody who's live streaming a mass attack should have the ability to do so? No, I'm not suggesting well, that at all. What are you suggesting then? I'm suggesting that we cannot target conservatives solely when looking at what they're doing. Somebody who is live streaming an attack like that should be shut off immediately if there is, if there is actual physical violence. Another mass Take you. No, I'll take that as input. I'm what? I'm the architect of the of January 6th. You know, that's what you think. If that's what you think is out there? That's not what I'm Okay, saying. tell me the rest. That's, that's what's out there as the narrative. What, a, what other, what other yeah, terrible thing out there? You're the architect and the lead promoter of the election. Okay. Illegal efforts. Okay. Well, first of all, I haven't done any illegal in my entire life. I have more experience in law enforcement than anyone involved in this. Number two, I've done more for reducing crime than any single one of them, and all of them combined. I understand crimes, and I don't you commit crimes. January 6th committee. Well, January 6th committee shouldn't even be talking about me. The judge dismissed me from the case, but there are a bunch of, uh, you, you guys react to them like they're really congressmen. 
They're not congressmen. They're a bunch of criminals. They're a bunch of criminals. These are the same people. Well, well, hold on. Let's be clear okay. about the change. When I, when I, let me, let's be clear no, about the committee. Go ahead and answer, but I, but I have an important point to this make. This is my too. answer. They're a bunch of criminals. And I'll tell you why they're a bunch of criminals. Every single one of them propounded the theory that Donald Trump was getting information from Russia. He was involved in Russian collusion. They continued that when he was president of the United States. Most of them were informed that it was untrue. And they continued it and continued it and continued it as three investigations cleared it. The FBI determined it two days after, and they were informed by Clapper of that. Notwithstanding that, Raskin, Shifty Shiv, the chairman, were the main proponents of a lie that they knew was a lie to remove a president of the United States. How can they be sitting on a committee, proven liars, trying to remove a lawfully elected president with a fraudulent story, proven beyond any doubt to be fraudulent? Some other presidential advisors so have said to the committee. Well, let, let, let me make one point about the committee. Can I make one point before you answer this about the committee? This committee under the House rules should not even be established. The minority leader did not get an opportunity to appoint his people up there. So, so to me, no, no, hold on. But that's very important. Hold, hold on a second. I'm, 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 I'm getting in on this right here. But this is very important to remember. This committee, by the House rules, they violated the House rules in establishing this committee. And you can't argue that that is just the truth of this. So to me, this is pretty obvious that we, that in looking at all of this, and, and Jason Miller's a, Jason Miller's a liar in all this. But, but I want to be very important. I know, I know. But I want to be very clear that this, that this committee, you, you come in and answer this. I just want to be very clear. This committee should not have even been established by the House Rules period. And you guys overlooked that. You want to know why? Because you guys are more like Pravda than you guys are actually now, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, now, you drunk tonight that you were advising the president you guys, on election day? You know, we're more worried about inflation. Okay, let's right talk now. about whether I was drunk. Gentlemen, now let me answer. You've made Stop terrible insanity. defamatory comments about me. So you guys You're suggesting me. I'm an alleged criminal. You're suggesting I was intoxicated. I, I, let I answer, answer the question. question. Let no, answer no, no. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. Let me, question. Let me, go ahead. Let me answer it because it shows me how prejudiced you are. First of all, you didn't include in that that five people have given statements that I wasn't that night. Let, let him answer the question. Let him answer the question. Is it? Uh, let's start again. Is your zealotry, is your hatred of Trump or whatever so great that you need to interfere? You can't let, let me get the last part of the sentence out. Is it too harmful? You're not addressing his question. I'm answering his question. question he asked me if I was intoxicated. Tell me again. Let's see if you have a mind that works. Tell me again if I wasn't answering his Mr. question. Mr. Giuliani, can you tell Take me? Take it back. Mr. Giuliani. Withdraw your statement. I, you're Mr. not telling the truth. You're misleading you people. Lying. Mr. Giuliani, were you drunk the night that you were advised? Here's the answer. No, I, I, was, I was with him. The answer is no. It's Obviously no. It's not just no. It's he has failed to do his homework. He has failed to go get it all over the place. Roy Bailey, five other people were with me all night. They have all said, I didn't have a drink that night because I was involved in doing election computation. I had Diet Coke all night. Is he lying? Go on Twitter. You'll see. He is definitely lying. He is not telling the truth. He is absolutely, Jason Miller is 100% lying, and we have numerous witnesses to prove it. Second, you say I'm involved in January 6th in some way. Have you read the opinion of the district court that dismisses me from the case saying that? So I, I want to I make one point here. You know, this is, this, this is, this is, this is go ahead, Brad, just let me handle it because you're really question. outrageous. You won't let me finish that answer. You are such a partisan. You won't let me finish that answer. What are you afraid of the answer? I'm telling what, what, what about I am about telling that? Americans what about the fact that the crime is up over here. Instead, you People of Buffalo, you guys are frills for the Democratic Party. It's just you don't true. care to ask those questions. And, and, and Americans Andrew, know that. One at a time. You people of Buffalo should know you've got one hell of a prejudice press. They won't let you answer a question. I'm answering his question. He doesn't like the answer. He asked me, was I involved in the January 6th uh, uprising and violence? A judge in the District of Columbia has dismissed me from the case at a very early stage, saying there's no evidence that I was involved. Let me make it a little clearer. The judge, which he's not aware of because he's not a good reporter, and therefore he has an unfair question, the judge wrote that there was no evidence that had anything to do with it. Absolutely no evidence. So I think I would go with the judge as the answer.
and then you create that. And then you create that. Can you explain to us, did you tell the president that night that he in fact won the election? I cannot tell you what I told the president that night. It's attorney-client privilege. I'm his lawyer. I have respect for the Sixth Amendment. Obviously, the Democratic Party doesn't. I've been practicing law for 50 years. I do not disclose my client's confidences unless a judge orders me to do that, and no judge has ordered me to do it. I can tell you this. Donald Trump had nothing to do with what happened on January 6th after his speech. Nothing. Zero. He didn't know about it in advance. He didn't plan it. And he didn't say a darn thing to them that would make them riot. Nothing like Schumer said about going after uh, 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 Justice Kavanaugh. What he said was, final end of the speech, we'll march to the Capitol peacefully and patriotically. And you want to go after him for inciting when he says that? He called, he called on Pelosi and he called on the mayor to take the National Guard. They didn't want the National Guard. He was going to do an insurrection. What the heck is he bringing the National Guard in for? Now, these are all the facts the committee leaves out. They leave out the murder of Ashley Babbitt. They don't show you the tape of an Antifa member who infiltrated. The Antifa member was stoking up people. He was telling them to burn down the Capitol, to break windows. He broke in. The day before, he gave a speech telling people to come to the Capitol, Antifa people, to come to the Capitol and burn it down. Have you seen his video? Would you say that shows how biased and prejudiced they are? This is Russian collusion, too. Here's the simple fact. They lied and lied and lied and lied for four years about Russian collusion, too. This group accused him of being a Russian agent. They accused me of being a Russian agent. I mean, the press kept writing that. They wouldn't write our side of the story. It now turns out, definitively, that group you see up there on that committee were liars trying to unseat a president on a lie. And who was telling the truth? Me and Donald Trump. That's going to be the case now. But watch them. They ask tricky questions, and they report one side of the story. It's totally unfair to ask me that question without mentioning the fact that five people have come forward, and it's all very public, and said they were with me all night and that I was perfectly sober. It's completely unfair for you to ask me about being involved in January 6th and not mention the fact that the judge cleared me of that. That and gives a false impression. And that's no, that's, that is why Donald can, Trump has to be reelected at some point. I, I, and Andrew and Giuliani has to be elected. I'm not sure what the unfairness is. Can you just explain? Well, I, 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 that's because you're warned. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me handle that. Let me handle that. I, I think, uh, what about a judge's opinion? Very, I think this is very indicative of what conservatives have felt over the last, Absolutely. really, seven, eight what years, which is you guys are in bed with the Democratic Party message. You guys don't treat Republicans asking, the same way. I'm asking you guys don't treat, you, you, you're interrupting time and time again. Uh, you're not letting us get our point across. You never do that to Democrats. I've seen it time and time again. And this is honestly, I think, what so many Republicans are feeling is that you guys are not going out there and, look, I don't mind tough questions. He doesn't mind tough questions. We just want you to make sure that you're giving the Democrats tough questions, giving Chuck Schumer those tough questions. And then I think we might have some respect for you. But honestly, I think there are a lot of Americans that have no respect for what you guys are doing. Here with your father, but I, I would love to take a question. Go ahead. Rudy, earlier in your remarks, you said Black Lives Matter was a police killing movement. Yeah. Sure, I'll explain what I'm talking about. Every single Black Lives Matter rally includes the following. Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, or kill the pigs. Who are the pigs? The police. You can't find a Black Lives Matter protest that doesn't include that chant. Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. If you took the time to read the literature of Black Lives Matter, you would find that it's founded by three trained Marxists. Patrice Kalorz was willing to admit it. They don't even have to worry about it. But now she's gone off because she stole 20 or 30 million, which is what the top echelon of a communist party does. It steals money from the people. Their main goal is to eliminate the police one way or the other. And they give themselves away at every single rally. The one in Dallas was tragic. They go through the streets of Dallas yelling, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. And then five cops get shot, two get killed. If you don't think the uptick in police killings has to do with that organization, you're out of your mind. They were all over America. The fact that they're not under investigation rather than this one day attempted insurrection without anyone having a gun and you're making a big deal out of it, 
and you warp the facts is outrageous. If they want to be fair, go investigate the 270 riots. riots. Go investigate the 27 people we know are dead, the police officers who died, the billions of dollars of damage. Consider to yourself that that created this crime wave because those criminals who are committing crimes watch people go in by the dozens, burn stores, bomb cars, take televisions, take beds, take anything they could take, li liquor. And the police stood there like this because they were told to. That empowers crime. And that is the reason why, and you might also notice that the crime of today is different than the crime of yesteryear. It's much more bold. I investigated five times more crime than we have now. They were afraid of the police. The ones now just come up and punch you in the head, bang you. A cop could be right there. What the Democrat Party did is go after the police and demonize them. Now, that shouldn't be such a surprise. The President of the United States, the leader of the party, says that police are racially, systemically racist. Being systemically racist is being systemically evil. By the way, he says you're systemically racist. Your country's systemically racist. If you believe that, stick with them, and you're going to have plenty of crime. But if you open your eyes, and you don't give money to an organization like Black Lives Matter, which advocates the killing of police, the ending of the two-parent family, father, oh, by the way, for Father's Day, their present would be, we shouldn't have fathers. We don't need fathers. Would you please read what they write? Read their manifesto, and you'll find out what they're about. Can I ask a follow-up on that? Sure. Well, to the three people, to the to the to the three people that died during that, it's worse than it. It depends. Right? Well, for the three people who died, to their families who lost no one on January 6th, if their families are killed by three Black Lives Matter people. That's worse. It's all. It's all. It's all in connection with the harm that's done to you. Who's worse off? I mean, Ashley Babbitt is the only person that was killed inside the Capitol after lies about four people being killed. The Times had to retract it. The Times is like you are. The Times prints things and doesn't put the other side. So the only person who was killed inside the Capitol, be clear on this, is Ashley Babbitt. And she was unarmed. She posed no threat to anyone. The standard for a police officer to shoot and kill you is he has to be in fear for his life. This cop had four cops in back of her who had banded their post on purpose. Four cops right near him. This is a five foot two woman, and she's jumping over. There's no reason to blow her away. You could have handcuffed her in a second. The cops in back could have pulled her down. Has that committee asked a single question about that homicide? And doesn't that show you this is the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, please understand this. But we're not going to get our country back. This is the same thing as Russian collusion. They're taking an incident that was wrong, shouldn't have been done. People should be prosecuted, but they shouldn't be persecuted. People shouldn't be in jail for 14 months without bail. I mean, we put every criminal back out on the street, except these people. Those are political prisoners. And then they get four months in jail as a sentence. They're charging insurrection. They haven't charged insurrection. No one, you listen to the testimony, they say suggestive things about me. No one has suggested that I advised him with regard to that rally. No one's even suggested that. And I am in a little bit of an unfair position since I was his lawyer. I almost wish I could do it. I can tell you this. Donald Trump is as innocent of this as he was of Russian collusion. Can I just ask a question here? Can you talk about the idea of the critical race theory and the great replacement theory? What's your take on hydro let, let me take a question from somebody else over here. Why would you not We've got, because, because you've gotten 17 questions. And I'd like to see if there's another question, and then we can get to your 18th question. Can I get one from you? Uh, would you be supporting uh, Carl Palladino for his campaign for the 23rd Congressional? Well, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't made a, de a decision on that yet. I mean, it is rather critical. I haven't made any decision on that. I, I, uh, I have some views about his opponent, but um, that's something I'll have to give some thought to. Can you answer my question? Now? Let me let me get to somebody else over here, and then we'll get to you guys. Go ahead. Any other questions? How no? active have oh. you been in seeking uh, President Trump's? Uh, I was just with President Trump two days ago, actually. 
Uh, we spent probably 20 minutes or so with him, talking with him fundraiser. about the race, came to our fundraiser along with Steve Bannon. Uh, and look, we talk continually about the race. Uh, it's been great to, you know, look, I worked for him for four years in the White House. I've known him for over 20 years. Uh, to have his advice throughout this uh, process has been spectacular. Um, so I talk to him all the time. How valuable is the Oh, look, I think for any Republican or any conservative in this day and age, I think it's so important to realize that President Trump changed the face of this party. And I think in so many ways, he pointed out what's wrong with many of the institutions uh, in America. And I think we're all seeing that, not just as conservatives and Republicans, but I think there are a lot of Democrats and independents that are seeing that as well. So obviously any, any advice, any opportunity to talk to and to learn from President Trump uh, is incredible. I feel very, very lucky. Mr. Giuliani. Yes. Can you please tell me your views on the critical race theory and the great replacement theory? Well, when I look at critical race theory specifically, I see something that is very damaging to our kids in the state of New York. And I think, honestly, what we've done is we've taken a fictional piece of work, like the 1619 Project, and we've decided to make that, in some places, uh, the centerpiece for curriculum here in the United States of America and in blue states like New York. Um, so I resist that. That's why I mentioned before the Parental Rights and Education Act in dealing with that, in dealing with the fact that there are two genders and being able to affirm that and not introducing our six, seven, eight-year-olds to ideas like this. I I'm a very, very big proponent in making sure we can teach traditional education here in the United States and, of America. And your response to the Great Replacement Theory? Well, the Great Replacement Theory I disagree with. Um, I'm going to tell you, though, that in looking at what's going on on our southern border, um, one of the things that I did when I worked in the White House was I worked on the opioid task force. And this is something that was personal to me. I had uh, 30 years opioid overdose went up in the United States of America until 2019, when finally, for the first time, it went down 17%. For the first time, this is an important point. This is an important point with what we're talking about here. Went down 17%. One of the very sad things about the pandemic, the many things, is the fact that it went up and skyrocketed because so many people were alone. Also, when you look at the fact that the southern border has been completely open and we're letting in over 2 million people a year, we're allowing fentanyl to pour in here. So do I think that we need to make sure that we're doing a much better job, or I should say a job at all, at making sure that we secure our southern border? I absolutely do. So can I just ask a follow-up then? Would you I, I have. I, I was I was I was at the Tops supermarket about three days after that shooting, and I condemn that, and I will continue to condemn that. I hope you or somebody in the media will get the opportunity to ask Chuck Schumer if he is forgiven this, if he has, if he is sad about the remarks that he made, and if he would actually look back and think about that. Um, again, and I know we're going back and forth on this over here. Um, I don't mind the tough questions. That's why I'm standing up here. I enjoy the tough questions. I think it's important for New Yorkers. But I think it's important to point out the general unfairness in the way the media has treated Republicans and conservatives recently versus Democrats and socialists. Can I just ask what you disagree with when you mentioned that you disagree with the, with the Great Replacement Theory? What do you disagree with? What's that? You said that you disagree with the Great Replacement Theory. What do you disagree with? I, look, I, 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 it's, that, that is, so uh, why, don't, why don't we actually talk about the issues that are important to New Yorkers right now? That is an and and it is right an important issue. And, I, and, I've, and I've, said that I, I've said that I disagree with it. So I, I, I disavow it. I completely disavow it, if you want to know. But I'm a big believer in making sure that we secure our southern border and we have legal immigration. There's my answer to that, okay? Any questions about $5 gas prices? Any questions about the fact that we have an economy in New York where we are leading the country in out-migration? Any questions about the fact that Buffalo is one of the leading cities for mid-level crime in the state of New York? Or are we going to continue to focus on political theater? Yeah, so we have 11 days here until primary day on June 28th. I'm asking New Yorkers to come out and vote on June 28th for me, Andrew Giuliani. Uh, tonight we'll be at a taste of country over here, right at the field, looking forward to it. And then we're going to be going over to Syracuse, debate in Rochester on Tuesday. So we're, uh, we're really looking forward to the final sprint here coming up. Should the shoot the, the suspect here in the United States, 
smashing at top. Should that person get the death penalty? Yes, I, and I have called for it. I stood uh, at the top supermarket. I stood here two or three weeks ago, uh, maybe 17 days ago, and said that as governor, uh, I think that should absolutely be on the table. Um, it's something that I've pushed for. I think that we should uh, absolutely have it as, as an option. And frankly, I think there should be victims' families' rights in this. I think they should be involved in this decision. I think if you look at the criminal justice issues that we've had in the state of New York, we haven't thought enough about the victims and their families here in the state over the previous couple of years. And that's why we've seen crime skyrocket in the state of New York. Okay, well, come on out and vote on June 28th, Tuesday, June 28th, for Andrew Giuliani. We're going to be a taste of country tonight. I think we're going to be uh, at uh, one of the parks over here tomorrow for the People's Convoy in Buffalo. I'm forgetting the name of the park right now. Uh, maybe it's Frontier Frontier Park, but uh, we're looking forward to that. And I want to thank, thank Mayor you. Giuliani for standing up with me as, as a son. Thank you, very, thank you very, very much. And I, I say to the people of Buffalo, if you listen to this whole thing, you'll see why, in fact, people are consistently voting for Democrats, like in Chicago, 50 years of Democrats, murder, 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 murder. There had been no riots in New York City from the day I became mayor until the new Democratic mayor took over. All these cities that have expanded crime are Democrat cities. We need a change. We need a Republican administration that's going to make reduction of crime the centerpiece and is willing to put up with the distortions and the failure to ask questions that are balanced. Not, you can ask tough questions, but you gotta ask balanced questions unless you're trying to warp the view of an electorate. So I think the people of Buffalo have seen that. But keep watching it. You cannot trust everything you read or see nowadays because it's warped. For example, wouldn't Donald Jr. be in jail now if he were Hunter Biden? Just ask yourself that question. If the answer to that question is yes, they have the reason for it. They, they agreed to the censorship of the hard drive for 18 months. They condemned the people who were putting it out as Russian agents. So when, when this guy accuses me of something, I've been accused of so many things I didn't do by a dishonest press. I've been proven correct. I feel I'm in a very strong position. I was accused for 18 months of being a Russian agent. No, New York Times hasn't apologized for that. None of you guys have apologized for that. So I'm used to the way we're treated. It makes us better when we govern. That's why Donald Trump surprised the world. Best economy, best economy for minorities. He surprised the world because they demonized him. And they're demonizing him again. You, the American people, have to see through that because they have an agenda and it's all left. Thank you. And, and one final thing, on Father's Day weekend, on the Friday of Father's Day weekend, I just want to say, um, you know, as a son, I, I am so proud of this man because of everything uh, that he's had to go through and uh, what he has continued to push through. I has continued to push for justice, gonna, for New Yorkers, for we, Americans. We keep, we keep getting vindicated uh, on is, all these things. Like we got vindicated on the hard drive, we're going to be vindicated let, on the same. Let's be very clear. We, we know the truth. Let's let's be clear. Politicians and the media both have narratives, right? Some narratives are true. Some narratives are false. How do you determine what narratives are true and false? You go to the data, and that ends up dictating what is fictional, what is not fictional. Uh, ever since the state of New York is founded, just look at the numbers, there's nobody that saved more lives in this state than Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. This man is an American hero, uh, and I'm very, very proud of him as a son uh, and as, uh, I I'm think, somebody that, that's earned his endorsement. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. But. <laughs> Thank you. Well, he's going to turn the state around the way well, I turn the city around. Thank you very much. Thank you for balancing it a bit. Thank you for balancing a bit with all the defamation he engaged in. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.